Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, hi, hello, how are you doing? We are back again with another episode from the 1000 Pound Cinematic Universe brought to us by TLC. Yes, we are here to talk about the 1000 Pound Besties starring Megan, Vanessa, Tina, and Ashley. Hey, how are y'all doing today? I hope you're doing well, and uh, we got we had a lot to talk about. This was an interesting episode, but I also have a lot of thoughts. Like, we're, we're five episodes in <laughs> to the 1,000 pound besties, and I just have some general thoughts about how I feel this show is going. Um, but before we get to that, I do want to say shout out to Tina and Megan, who both, like, keep engaging with me uh, in DMs on Instagram, but also commenting on the videos and watching. I appreciate it. I do want to say that Tina left a comment last week where she helped explain some of her experience at the gym. So if you don't recall, they went to a gym where the, the trainers were just, like, shouting and yelling. And Tina did share this comment on my last video last week where she said, I have sensory processing disorder, PTSD from past abuse, and because of these things, also panic and anxiety disorder. I cannot handle loud, aggressive men. I told the producers that before the workout, but none of us, including myself, knew that that would be my reaction. I honestly thought I'd scream back and just lose my shiz. The crying reaction surprised me. Believe it or not, I'm not an all-time crier. I purposely surround myself with calm, chill men. I haven't been around aggressive men in years, and when I'm faced with a mouthy guy, I usually fight back. This was just too much, I guess. So I just want to say I appreciate Tina for sharing that, like, additional insight and information. I think that that's probably relatable for a lot of people and also really helpful just to know the context because I don't know, maybe this will come up again later, but part of my critique of TLC is that we don't really have enough context to know really about any of these women. And like, the, the character development, even though these are like real people, right? So we're not talking about like, they're not characters necessarily on TV, but all, all television, even reality television, has to develop characters for us to like get to know them, understand their motives for doing things, and understand why it is that they are the way they are on the show. And I feel like, honestly, truly, outside of maybe Megan and Vanessa a little bit, but especially with Tina and Ashley, we don't really know much about them as characters and much about who they are and why they do the things they do on the show. And I think that that is, like, one of the biggest challenges about the show so far. But we are going to talk about that a little bit more because it really just, like, came out of me as I was watching last night. <laughs> so I was watching it and I was taking notes and I'm just like, I have a lot of thoughts about this. So we're gonna talk about some of that. And I don't know, maybe maybe in a whole separate video I can do a like comparison of like why 1,000 pound sisters worked, but like 1,000 pound besties is not working in the same way. You know what I'm saying? Which is like, not to say that they have to be the same, but but they are clearly a part of the same, like, cinematic universe, and so I do think that they were kind of, like, banking on the same kind of success as the 1,000 Pound Sisters, and they're not getting it. I don't know. Anyways, thoughts, thoughts to consider, but let's get into this week's episode, shall we? So if you don't remember, the last episode ended where Megan and Vanessa and Vanessa's uh, sons were trying to get her stuff moved out of Jackie's house, and Jackie was yelling, 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 and that's where we pick off this time. I do have a lot of questions. They end up getting everything into the van and moving over to the... <laughs> to the new place and it's actually kind of wild that they got this big old van to move all this stuff when there were like three maybe four boxes <laughs> in the van to begin with I was like what exactly are we moving here that you couldn't just move in the regular van that you normally are driving around in and I was also kind of concerned because I was like what are you moving into an empty house what what is going on but we do find out that they actually are moving into a house that seems to be already furnished i don't know i guess sometimes that happens when you rent homes that like are already furnished i don't know i was expecting it to be empty and they did go to their new house and there were beds and furniture and couches and whoever whatever so i'm glad i'm glad they got some of this stuff because i saw those 
three boxes in the back of their van. I'm like, what are y'all moving? Like, what, what all do you have? But in general, they do discuss like their love for Jackie and who she is, but also just hope that like at the end of all of this, Jackie will realize that this is for the best for everybody involved. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's how I was feeling at the end of the last episode. It's just like, I hope that she can like look back at this in the, the future and be like, hey, <laughs> maybe this was for the best because it gave me big Mama Slayton vibes where like Mama Slayton was just like not helpful. She was very negative and I'm hoping maybe in, in some kind of future season, Jackie can come back and like show that she's like not a, a miserable human. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it seems like both Megan and Vanessa do care about Jackie and who she is as a person. It's just like she is in a, in a place right now where she's not able to be a good human to them. But they get to the new apartment home that Vanessa and her family are renting and a theme of this episode is testing out the beds. <laughs> so we get to see a little a little start of that with Vanessa rolling up on the bed. Oh, roll on there. You just get your kids to throw your legs. <laughs> Here, I got you. Don't worry. Come on, baby. <laughs> just the edge of the bed. You okay? <laughs> And then truly, the, the rest of this scene is Vanessa saying she wants to do something nice for Megan because Megan has been so supportive, so helpful, so ready to just, like, do what she has to do to help Vanessa get to a good place. And so Vanessa says, mm, you know how I just spent a whole lot of time talking about how I had to pinch pennies and save up money just so I could afford to rent my own place? Well, try to forget all of the financial struggles I've talked about either on this show or the original Too Large show that I was on. Forget about all of that. Forget about all those financial struggles because I'm going to take you to Florida because you said one time that you wanted to walk on the beach. You told Dr. Proctor, once I lose the weight, I want to walk on a beach. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to plan a trip. <laughs> I'm going to plan a trip for us to go to Florida. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you could just tell from that little mini rant I went on, but I just have a huge issue with TLC continuing to plan things for these girls to do that like clearly costs money when they also want to like sell this narrative that Vanessa is poor and can't afford things. Like, I think I think that that's probably the the real story is that Vanessa really is poor and can't afford things. I think that that's probably the actual story, and then they're just like planning these things and then saying Vanessa's doing it. And I don't know, it's fine, I guess, like, please do. I, in the show, they also say, like, they, they realize that it's not gonna make any sense to have Vanessa planning this, so she does say that allegedly Tina and Ashley are helping cover the costs of this trip, but Let's be honest, TL TLC is covering the cost of this trip. <laughs> TLC is covering the cost of this trip. Like, I, I don't believe that Tina, Ashley, or Vanessa are putting up money to go on this trip. And I, it bothers me because I think, and we'll get to this later, but I think that that's part of like what's so inauthentic about this show that I feel like people are trying or struggling to like connect with because they're going on these things that they probably wouldn't normally do as a friend group and they're going on these trips that they probably couldn't afford to go on as a friend group or at least Vanessa probably couldn't afford to go on and so it just seems really inauthentic to me that that that's what we're watching them do like it doesn't seem real to me that this is the conversation we're having right now. I don't know. I, you can let me know what your thoughts are about that, but I've noticed it before, too. I mean, even with the last trip they went on, that, like, glamping trip, like, I felt the same way then, and, you know, going to all of these different gyms and doing all these different workouts, like, gyms and workouts and trainers cost money normally, right? And so I guess, like, my my real frustration is that I would rather TLC help them with things that are actually going to improve their day-to-day -day lives. Like, I don't know, maybe TLC helped get Vanessa the apartment, you know? Like, maybe that is something that they're doing to help her with her day-to-day -day life, but 
there's clearly so many things that money could change about the way that Vanessa and Vanessa's family live. And then the TLC's like, okay, well, we're going to go to Florida. And, and that, that's not even to mention that, like, we're going to go to Florida and, like, are, is anybody going to be, like, following the quote-unquote diet? I don't know. Maybe I've ranted about this too much, but does that make sense? Do y'all do y'all feel me? Like, yes, it's a cute moment that, like, Megan is going to get to have this full circle experience where she gets to go do the thing, walk on the beach like she told Dr. Proctor she wanted to. But I'm like, I don't know. I just, like, feel like this is not... A trip that had TLC not been producing this show that these girls would have gone on. So the next scene we see is Megan and Tina at like a, a playground with Tina's kids and this kind of gets to the part about like the story arc stuff like the character development that I think has been missing for me. We get all of these things where Tina talks about being a mom but we don't ever actually see her really truly being a mom. You know, like, this is, like, such an important part of her identity, and at most we've seen, like, a couple scenes of her in the kitchen maybe making food for her kids or something like that. We've never really seen her engage in, like, motherhood on the show. So we do get a little bit of that here where it does give us a little bit of context for that part of her identity. And what I will say that I appreciate about Megan in this scene is she looks like the 4th of July. <laughs> she makes me want a hot dog real bad. Like, like, I just love this outfit. I don't know if it actually was like the 4th of July weekend or Labor Day weekend or Memorial Day weekend or any other holiday where people cosplay as the American flag, but I was, I was loving the look. But Megan really uses this opportunity to try to convince Tina to talk to Dr. Proctor, which I, I don't know, for me, I kind of take issue with because, you know, I feel like Tina has made it clear that that's just like not something she feels comfortable with. I mean, she talks about it in this particular scene, like her reasons for not wanting to go pursue bariatric surgery in any kind of way is that she's worried about the risks of surgery and like not having to go through surgery if you don't have to. And she talks about like not wanting to like leave her kids without a mother. My two biggest fears in this world are me leaving my kids alone without me or losing one of my children. And now I'm facing either keep going how I'm going and possibly leave them or make the decision to go do something that can take me like that. But then Megan is just like, well, right now they're without a mother. Like you're sitting on this bench, like while your kids are playing and she's like, they're going to be without a mother. If like, you don't actually end up losing this weight on your own and blah, 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 blah. And I don't know, like I respect everybody's options to like pursue bariatric surgery if they want to or not, right? <laughs> like, I feel like it's really weird for Megan to be like, hey, this worked for me, so I'm gonna like pressure you into doing it for you. Now, do I think it hurts Tina to go have a conversation with Dr. Proctor about what it looks like? No. Do I think that TLC also might have been behind pushing Megan to talk Tina into doing this? Probably. Like, I don't know. I guess actually that's really one of my biggest frustrations with 1,000 Pound Besties is that so much of it, like, you know, occasionally when we were talking about the Slayton sisters, like, I occasionally would be like, oh yeah, TLC set this up. TLC wanted this to happen. And listen, I'm a connoisseur of reality TV and I 100% believe that, like, that is just a part of reality television where they are going to set up certain situations. It's not necessarily always scripted, but they're gonna set up situations to make good TV. So I just feel like I'm saying that so much for the 1,000 Pound Besties. Like almost every scene feels a little bit forced, a little bit more guided, a little bit more planted by TLC. And I think that that's like one of my critiques of it. So either way, Megan does convince Tina that she should go talk to Dr. Proctor. And it looks like in next week's episode, we're going to get to see that conversation. It doesn't sound like Tina's committed to like getting surgery, but she did say like, I will go talk to him and see what, what we can do. And yeah, I guess like, 
good for her. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I just like feel like it was very forced and pressured and I it didn't sit well with me because it doesn't actually seem like something Tina's actually interested in. So the next scene we get to see is Vanessa, Megan, and Tina going to get spray tans where they are going to have to get naked and get sprayed down by this overly spray tanned woman that owns this spray tan salon situation type of deal. And they're doing this because, uh, because per Vanessa, they just like don't want to look really pale and white on the beach. We can't walk up in there looking like three little white sticks. <laughs> three beach balls, excuse me. And this is probably a larger conversation for a different setting in a different time, but I just like want to say to my fellow like white people <laughs> that like I don't understand this like obsession with like tanning, spray tanning, whoever, whatever. Like, I don't know. I guess like I just embraced a long time ago that I'm a very, very pale person. Like I burn if I go out in the sun and and I can't even imagine what a spray tan would look like on me. I will say, I felt like it was also weird though that later in this scene that they talked about how they felt like the spray tan was like contouring their bodies and making them look thinner. I, I think that that, I mean like regardless of whoever size, like maybe, but also like what a lie. <laughs> like what a lie. Like I don't, I don't know. It felt like a weird thing that like TLC was co-signing like, yeah, just go tan and you'll look thinner. Like, like tan your way to losing 10 pounds. I mean, that's not what they were saying, but it kind of felt like that's what they were trying to say. The whole situation seemed kind of weird because like, I think we all know if you've watched the show up to this point that like Vanessa's really the only person that's comfortable with just getting naked. And they filmed this whole scene making everybody get naked in front of everybody. Megan is clearly, like, not super confident in her body, not super comfortable in her body. And <laughs> I will say she's particularly worried about her baboon's ass. I don't want my baboon's ass to hang out. Girl, what? Baboon's what ass. So there's camel toe, there's moose knuckle. Well, mine is a baboon's ass because... Large. Which, to be quite honest, I thought she was full on talking about just like her actual ass, but she was apparently talking about her fupa, so there's that. I do remember now she talked about like retaining water there in some episodes, like the, maybe the very first episode, or maybe that was during Too Large. Either way, I, I do remember she's talked about that before, but... <laughs> I was not, was not anticipating that to be what she was referring to. But yeah, the whole idea seemed to be to get Megan and Tina both out of their comfort zones, but I don't know. As somebody who is, is more confident in my body than I think Megan is, but also doesn't, <laughs> doesn't like to be naked, like, I don't know that, like, forcing me into a situation where not only am I, like, getting naked in front of, like, a stranger, like the woman that owns the spray tan salon, but also like in front of cameras, okay, because there's a whole filming crew, <laughs> okay. I don't know that that's gonna help me feel personally more confident. And then on top of that, you're asking Tina to participate in this when we already had this whole ordeal where Tina was upset that Vanessa got naked. Now granted, it seems like Tina's at least consenting to this situation, like it seems like she signed up to show up and film this today. But it's just like, why are we doing this? Why is this necessary? Why why are we making these women who are uncomfortable with getting naked do this? Like, what is this really doing? So I don't know, T Tina does do it because she wants, you know, Megan to feel confident for stepping out of her comfort zone. And Megan does also end up doing it as well. I'm not entirely convinced this was really like the move to like make her feel all this empowerment and confidence. I don't feel like she actually walked out of that spray tan salon feeling that way. And can I also say, I, nothing against Vanessa, Megan, or Tina, but I did not think that that woman did a good job giving them spray tans. It looked so splotchy, so, so wild. Like, I honestly think they would have looked better just not, not doing it at all. But as long as they felt good about it, which they seemed to feel good about it, like, who, who am I to judge or say? But I was just like, I don't know that any of this was worth all of that. 
So the girls pack it up, they get in a van. They do have some like conversation in the van ride there. The only part that I found particularly interesting is that they were having a conversation about holding each other accountable. And <laughs> they talked about comparisons between eating food and, and having a man. I would much rather be filling my mouth with a man instead of food, for real. I, I, I mean, I, I can do both. There, you there, don't have there's room. There's room for both. I and I was actually kind of surprised to hear Tita chime in on this as well. You ain't hungry afterwards. He ain't yeah. hitting it right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I think I'm just gonna have to agree with Ashley that like you can get it both. You you can have but why why are we choosing between bed and food? I, you're not gonna find me doing that. <laughs> not my gay ass. So they get to their little like beach house Airbnb moment situation, and of course they gotta hump test all the beds. We have to hump test all the beds. Hump test all the beds and the couches. <gasps> The hump test is to check for um, stability, security, and noise to make sure that you can and you ain't gonna get so the whole house don't know what's really going on. And I am kind of curious who they think they're gonna have sex with on this trip. It seems like something that they're all thinking about. Well, and by they all, I mean Ashley and Vanessa because they're the single ones. But it seems to be something that they think is actually gonna happen. So I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll be surprised and we'll see that next episode. But they end up getting together. They have some champagne, I think. <laughs> and Megan just starts throwing them back. Throwing them back. And girl is wasted off of two sips of a wine cooler. What's she doing? I'm just, I'm just exercising. I'll be back. Would you get up? Sorry, I'm back. <sighs> And I do have to say those liquid calories get you, girl. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that because the rest of this episode is basically like Megan struggling with alcohol. So if that's something that uh, is is not content you're prepared for, <laughs> then just know that this is your warning. Like the, the whole rest of this episode is just surrounding mostly Megan's choice of like replacing food with alcohol. I will say before we get to their night out on the town, they do have this moment where they like get on this golf cart and these rain ponchos cause it's raining and drive around Panama City Beach. Oh my God. This oh, is my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. It's tipping over. Oh God. Lee towards the right. I guess my main confusion is why they're not just in the van that they brought to drive around, especially because it's raining. It's almost again like TLC said, well, we rented this golf cart. We're gonna get we're gonna get these shots of y'all driving and riding in this golf cart because we didn't pay for this shit for nothing. So, so that was fascinating. Uh, and then they stop at a gift shop to get some some size six X airbrush T-shirts. So that's cute and and wonderful and such a moment for them, I'm sure. So they decide to have a girls' night out, and they all get dressed. And as she's getting dressed, Megan is concerned about like what she's wearing because she is wearing like a crop top situation with a skirt and she's just like oh people are gonna look at me people are gonna stare and i listen if there's one thing that vanessa's gonna do is hype up a friend and she does make a good point about people staring regardless but do i want people staring at me and going what the people hell are gonna stare at us anyway we are fat. People are going to stare Should at us. Should I wear this? So I do agree with that. Like, like I feel like you got to just go out and wear what you want to wear because, like, the reality is, is people are going to stare and let them mind their own damn business because you're going to have a good time. But that's really a motivating factor for a lot of the drinking stuff. So she says that she's basically, when they're out, she's looking for something that's low carb. She said that she focused on not eating too much so she could just drink more calories. And she feels like if she drinks enough that she will be less concerned about like what people around her think and feel. And that's like not great ways of thinking about a relationship with alcohol. Like that's not the healthiest way to think about consuming alcohol. I mean, I don't know if I really have to tell you all that, but if I, 
If, if you didn't know, that's not a great way to pursue a relationship with alcohol. Especially as many of them point out, once you have bariatric surgery, you are much more susceptible to like smaller amounts of alcohol, right? Like you have less of a tolerance, smaller amounts of alcohol get you drunker quicker. And so they're just like, all of, all of the other girls are concerned about Megan and her drinking. To the extent that she's like, literally like stealing other people's drinks at the table. I need a second. Let me tell you something. Hey. <laughs> no, it's not that it's Bitch, security. And she is just drunk as a skunk. Nobody wants that. Oh, okay. Bitch. And Tina's really had it. She was like, this was supposed to be my break from being a mom for the weekend. And now I have to sit here and babysit. Megan's drunk ass. And Megan ends up having a full breakdown, like talking about how she feels like she disappointed Tina and how how just like she's a disappointment and just full on crying. And it does, it is kind of hard to watch because it reminds me a lot of like drunk Zach in college when, when I was going through some shit. And my poor friends that had to deal with me just having like a cry breakdown while I was drunk. And so, I, I mean, yeah, that, I guess that's like why I'm speaking to the extent of like using alcohol to like cope with your, your emotions and feelings, isn't it? And honestly, again, I just want to say Vanessa, they, they end up getting Megan back to their little like beach home rental Airbnb situation. And Megan is still having her breakdown. And Vanessa is so good at hyping her up. Like, get you a friend like Vanessa who's really gonna hype you up. You do not drink it. I away. love myself. There's nothing wrong with you, Megan. You are gorgeous. Baby, you all look at the outfit you own tonight. You look like a goddamn queen, baby. You look beautiful. Or gorgeous. I want you to know that. That's why I scream, because maybe one day you'll hear me tell you you're beautiful and you'll say, you know what, Vanessa? You ain't right, I'm beautiful, baby. I am that bitch. But yeah, in general, I don't know. It's obviously very concerning that like Megan is is choosing to like drink her feelings and trying to look for for some kind of like therapy in the bottom of a, an alcohol bottle. And it looks like we're going to get more of that conversation next week. So I'm curious to see how that goes. In fact, like we also see next week that Megan and Vanessa also go back to therapy. So I think that that's probably a, a good move, a good start for, for Miss Megan. And also like, we don't know that this is how she's like, this is a one-time event, right? Like, I don't know that we have seen anything to suggest that this is like how Megan is living her life outside of this trip, you know? So, so who knows? Like this could just be one example, but it does seem even just from this night that like she has a lot of feelings that she needs to work out with like a professional therapist or a professional mental health um, person. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I guess my problem now that we're five episodes into this series is that we just haven't gotten any kind of character development and nothing, like, we don't know what the motives and actions of these people are. Like, we don't know enough about them to understand why Vanessa gets so angry so quickly. We don't know enough to understand why Tina seems to be so uncomfortable with, like, literally everything. Like, she literally, I didn't say it yet, but she literally at one point in this episode talked about how she didn't like to drink in public, but then she was drinking in public anyways. Like, none, none of the, none of the actions seem to match, like, the very little that we know about them. And I also feel like it doesn't seem like we're getting anything, any kind of, like, interactions that would have just naturally happened had TLC not been there. Like, one of the things that worked out for the 1,000 Pound Sisters is that there were so many things that they just did at their own house. Like, they had the, the YouTube filming, like, scenes where, like, granted, we, we know that those videos never ended up on their channels, but it still seemed way more natural that that would be something that the two the two of them would be doing. They did things like family cookouts and family gatherings that like 
clearly didn't cost them any money and they could just show up and do it. It seems just a little like inauthentic to me and I think a little forced from TLC. Like I would like to see more just like natural interactions from them, like that they would actually be having. I mean, I know that this is reality TV and it's produced, but it's just coming across as forced and in a way that the 1000 Pound Sisters didn't most of the time. Now granted, like, we got three seasons in and they were taking family trips and things like that that I, I think they probably also wouldn't be doing had TLC not been filming their show. But at that point, we knew a lot about both Amy and Tammy, and then when they introduced new characters, like, we had plenty of time to get to know Chris, to get to know Misty, to get to know Amanda, so <laughs> it just, like, it feels like they're trying to sell us on all four of these women, and, like, we barely know the two women who came from Too Large, you know? I don't know. I don't know if y'all feel me. I know a lot of people only just, like, watch my recaps because they like watching me and they're not even watching the show. But I was just feeling some type of way about that. It kind of makes me mad. I, want, I do want to get to know who these people are. I feel like all of their... Uh, behavior could probably be explained if we understood like more about who they are as people and what their motives are for doing those things are. And instead we get them going and getting spray tans, spending money on a trip to Florida. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just not adding up for me. But yeah, I think that's all I have time for today. I can't think of anything else I really want to discuss, but would be curious to know how y'all are feeling about the show. I mean, I'm going to keep doing the coverage of it because I am enjoying the show. I don't want you to, like, think I'm not, but, like... I think it could be better, is my point. I think it could be better. Um, so let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new to my channel and this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notifications every single time I post a new video. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, follow me on all of my social media, and have a great day. Bye.